so welcome to the second session second session on valve analysis using uh, Wireshark so uh, we stopped uh, the last session uh, uh, in moving into a demo on fast flux so first of all we guys have to uh, learn about what is fast flux so now uh, now because this is a concentrated on using uh, Wireshark on understanding mal malware so we have to understand like how this malware works all together so uh, especially when it comes to malware whereas there are so many types uh, these days uh, most of the malware is distributed using uh, the botnets all right botnets uh, which are really famous so what happens is uh, you have this uh, what you call as a command and control center C and C center and then you guys, uh, sorry, the, the command and control center basically handles the botnet all around and then it uh, manages the uh, botnet, right? But these days, uh, there are distributed, uh, uh, so you don't have one CNC center, rather you have more distributed, uh, uh, distributed uh, CNC centers. So they use something called fast flux, is basically the, how they basically use DNS records so we we'll try to understand this one, right? So uh, how to identify uh, this usage of fast flux uh, within the network. So to do that, uh, before I do that, I will show you like a uh, very interesting uh, website, which I bring here, which this is from uh, Kaspersky. So there are so many different uh, digital attack maps like this uh, from Kaspersky and several other providers. So if I go to the map here, uh, if I get the full screen, that would be much better. Okay. Okay, right. Leave full screen. Okay. So now as you can see, uh, this is a real time map and uh, so you get data from multiple places so these are the places where they get their data OS, ODS, MAV, WAV so we'll, we'll have a look at it then later guys don't worry so uh, now if you go through the globe you can find out uh, depending on where you are so, so everywhere you see different types of attacks so these are all malware related attacks so if you select uh, where we are, somewhere here, so if you can zoom in. Okay, all right, so that's where we are. So that's here in Sri Lanka, so click on that. So you can get the uh, uh, basic details of Sri Lanka, 57 most attacked country. So they are not really famous, right? Uh, so these are the uh, places where they get the uh, analysis data. So uh, from this analysis, they have got 11,000 something. This is called on access scan, and this is called on demand scan, and this is called uh, ma mail antivirus, uh, so and web antivirus, so like basic groups. Right. So then you can go and understand the more details. Some of them are not available even. Uh, botnet activity is not present. All right, so if you go to our neighboring country, India, the 11 most attacked country, and if you go to China, second most attacked country, what do you think is the first? Uh, Japan, yes, Japan, uh, nine most attacked. So is it Russia or is it US? I don't know. Uh, if you look Russia, yeah, number one most attacked country. So the hatred towards Russia is, you can see, there's a lot, no? millions. And if you go the other way around, uh, so at the time of Corona, even you find these things happening. So where the world is going, you can't understand. And so this is USA. So if you go six most attacked countries, so you can obviously go for other countries like probably I think Korea, Greenland, maybe two. <laughs> so no one is there, right? Okay, all uh, right. So and also if you look at the statistics. Uh, you can find out uh, real-time graphs. So it's take a bit of a time to load. All right. So and also you can see most infected today: Russia, China, Germany, Vietnam. I'm not sure why Vietnam is in the list. 
and also uh, the world by Uzbekistan uh, right and Europe so this is very good for people who are studying about malware and also top local infections in the last week uh, hack tool yes uh, autogen and then so hack tool there's so many of them and then Trojan is there okay so that's basically a list of things right and then you can look at the data sources like I explained earlier on access scan shows malware uh, detection flow during on access scan on demand scan mail antivirus into idea systems so likewise uh, you have other things all right and uh, yeah so that's basically to get the, give you generic idea so but there are so many different types of maps like this which you guys can uh, look at uh, which can be quite uh, uh, useful for your analysis parts right so now what I'm going to do uh, so let me go back to the uh, so now we are going to find about the fi uh, uh, fast flux so this is some generated content right so yeah let me check any DNS record so let me do a filter DNS nothing oops okay so let me then capture something i'm not sure which was what was that capture so let me start the capture uh continue data saving so let me capture two things and to make sure that there will be some traffic generated on dns let me go to www uh, so i will go to nowhere.com you can't see what I'm typing or whatever, but it's okay. So it generates some DNS, probably to generate some DNS. All right, uh, it went somewhere, which is good. All right, so now I'm going to stop this. Okay, so that's fine. So I believe there will be some DNS traffic. So let me. So yeah, I have a lot of DNS traffic here. Um, so it's looking for things. Yep. So let me select one. So this is the response. So you have queries and query responses. So this one is a query and this one is a response, right? So if I go to the DNS section here now, uh, check that I'm recording this. Oops. Yes. Worries. So then, if you go to the answers, so this is the query, guys. Google, I want to find Google, and then uh, yes. So if I look at the answers uh, and also additional records, you find details. Um, okay. look at one of them okay now uh, see this is the one that I was looking for time to live value is 231 for this answer this record but what this uh, fast flux does is it tries to send this data without pointing it the right direction with a very small time to live value so but if you check any of these things you get uh, the time to live value says 230 230 so these are the standard values if I check something else so if I uh, looking at a response uh, which goes to okay nowhere.com so this is my query response <laughs> this is what i typed in uh, if i looked at the time to leave values you can see uh, these are of course large values right so you understand now that you don't have any small values right now what i'm going to do i'm going to open a uh, file capture which I downloaded from the internet. So this was captured just to demonstrate uh, this fl uh, fast flux, right? So uh, you guys can download this from the internet. Uh, there's a GitHub page where I'll be able to find these things uh, without much of difficulty. Uh, so, or else I will uh, put the links in the video 
uh, description please uh, get the links from there and also please subscribe and please like the videos like the request right now if you check these things so these are the queries but rather I'll be looking into responses so this is a response so as you can see if you go here guys you can see time delivery value is 60 right so all of these things time delivery value is 60 so that shows a clear so it's a query no response response this time delivery value is 60 see and all of these things responses time delivery 60 this is a core a principle of identifying a fast flux right so once you have it you can understand out that like that uh, like a specific website so this can be a clear botnet activity right so when you find something like so this is how we do analysis for malware right so this is a pure situation of uh, identifying malware right so of course now see as an example this is a tip on uh, Wireshark if you want to get only responses so queries and then uh, so let me check on a response uh, the answers no, so you can click here and then apply as a filter as selected so you will see only uh, so that's basically only one response but you can select on the response and select then then only it will select response only right so those sort of things can be done uh, as in uh, Wireshark okay good so that part is done all right so now uh, I'll take you to another interesting thing uh, this time we'll do a bit of experiment uh, so there is something called a T sharp right so this is uh, up to this point we use Wireshark Oops, Wireshark right, this is what I used so now there's another tool called T sharp uh, so yeah so let me check the man page for T sharp and see what is this thing Oh, no manual, then. that's okay. Um, I'll go to documents and I'll create a directory. Oh, sorry, uh, T shark. Okay, T -shark. okay. Now I'm going to do some neat uh, stuff with this. So let me. All right. So what I'm going to do now. Uh, so I'm going to run T Shark. So this is also like wire, uh, similar to Wire Shark, but this will uh, capture packets. Like for for specific instances, you can do things faster. I like can write scripts and things like that. So this can be useful. So E and zero, that's my network. So now I'm going to capture some packets uh, with Wire Shark, right? Um, okay. So I'm going to give a name. So this is the intro and save it as pcap okay so uh, it's running in the background it seems t shark okay so let me close this less oops no uh, something just happened all right give me a second so what's the issue Right, so what I'm going to do is the same command. Okay, so yeah, it's fine. So let's start this. Maybe a bit of a time. So start working. So it started capturing, so you can see that it's capturing some packets. All right, it's all cool. Right, so now I'm going to stop this capture. All right, so then I'm going to do a ls. Yep, so I can see the file. So what I'm going to do now, I can actually view what I've captured from T Shark itself, uh, or else. Uh, what I can do um, I can uh, get this file so you can see 
I find this pcap file so I can open it from uh, flash up. So that can be done quite easily. So I can see uh, some packets are being captured, which is good. So that's my pcap file. All right. So now what I can do is I can leave uh, what's in the pcap using a command. The command is T shark. Okay, T shark. Uh, minus R to read. Oops. Minus R to read in pcap. So that will basically read uh, the content from. The pcap file. All right. Okay, that's good. So next, uh, what I can do, I can run uh, a T shark uh, to extract HTTP request using. Uh, you can use minus T here. So let let us try doing it. Uh, so T shark. Okay, done, and we can see minus i. We have used it in uh, TCP dump as well, and then say capital Y, and we can define our filter request HTTP dot request request. All right, the spelling is correct. R E Q U E S T, and capital T uh, extract the fields. So we are going to extract some fields here. Uh, so you can see like uh, the same thing you can do from PyShark but if you have a specific thing that would capture rather than going and you know putting more time in the PyShark you can do this fast here and I want to get HTTP host so this can be used for, for bug bounty and all the other tech crazy things uh, vulnerability scanning, pen testing, what not so then we get the usage so this is what I want all right, so now I'm typing things. I, if I want, I can generate some traffic if needed. So that's also possible to do. So only thing is, it takes a bit of a time. Oh, what is that? I must be one, okay. Uh, minus the parameter field, okay, okay, sorry. So I think I misspelled it, fields. Fields. What's that? Let's stop it here. Clear. Okay, that is it. So I'll also generate some traffic if needed. So it takes a bit of a time. So I'll pause the video and come back uh, when it's captured. Okay, so it's capturing now. Yeah, so see these are the things generated. It's really cool. So that was what you were expecting. So you get the HTTP host. So I'm, I went to Google Gmail actually. So this is Gmail. And also the use agent is my Chrome browser. Let me check with another browser. I'll close this connection a bit. I'll open Safari, which is available in my Mac. Um, let's see whether this guy captures it. So I'll go to Facebook. Going now, Let's see whether this guy captures it. Especially, I just want to see whether the uh, use agent get captured. Still waiting. One of the issues is that my machine is pretty slow now. I should be able to capture it. Okay, so one more game. 
All right, see, that's cool, no? That's Chrome in Mac. Ah, how it does by Windows. Okay, this probably something else, I don't know. It's still capturing, so it's from Mac. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's working, it's working. That's expected. All right, it is good. Okay, so this is my, this is actually the Firefox. Uh, I'm using Firefox also to do my, uh, probably if you have looked at uh, one of my bug bounty lectures. Uh, so I'm using the Juice uh, Hero Quark. Uh, so, yeah. It also sends messages back and forth. Okay, let me close that guy. Okay, so this is the see this is the OS Duke shop from Firefox. Yeah, so that's also generated some messages. Yeah, that's captured by so I uh, see there are messages. Uh, which is cool. Okay. So remember I have not captured this into a PCAP. That's the only difference. Alright, that's done. So now you see you can do that. So I'm not going to do like or capture everything and open it through Wireshark, no need. But these are, you can see you can uh, do a lot of cool experiments with that, right? It's really, really cool. Okay, so now you can do a little more, little more with uh, Wireshark, sorry, uh, T-Shark. So we'll do another one. This time I'm going to copy this one here rather than wasting time. Oops, right? So T sharp, so you can capture it to example PCAP, and then you can see the request and the fields would be host, destination, and request full URL. So let's start that. It might take a bit of a time to capture it. All oh, right, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, uh, so I have not created that file before. So, uh, we not we do a live capture like previous. Otherwise, it won't work. But uh, it's basically a matter of adding a new uh, field. So I don't think that it's really important. But this way also you can do. You can look at the captured one and okay. So I'm not going to run that anyway. It's not that difficult, right? Uh, So next one, uh, we'll go and do a DNS, uh, uh, a DNS query. Okay. So fill the screen, and we'll do a T shark. Okay, and then minus I, and my um, interface. Minus F. So this is where I build the filter source port. So remember, sometimes the display filter uh, just say DNS, but the real filter you have to do is as source port because if you go to the Wireshark uh, documentation, uh, if you do uh, this way of filtering, you have to use a different title, right? So don't get it wrong, guys. So this is a uh, source port port 53 is like same as in DNS in uh, the display filter uh, when you open now see as an example if you open the Wireshark here that's my Wireshark guys okay, stop open let me close this guy okay I'll close this as well Now here if you type in you can type of course dns right uh, so but that will not work uh, here in the t sharp command so you can type in dns here in the uh, display filter right uh, but here you guys have to use uh, the source code 53 right and you can say minus 
n minus t like earlier for fields right fields correct fields n uh, minus t uh, and you define dns query and you can say name uh, minus e so that will be different fields at this all right that will do again i'm not saving this pcap file okay so so likewise there are a lot of things uh, which you can do in t -shark, right so i'm not going to go beyond this one because now you understand how this really works so if you have a very specific activity to be to be done you can always uh, all right what happens Uh, the ADDR, yeah, that's fine. RESP field sound valid. So that was the issue. DNS, it's okay. RESP ADDR. Hmm. Okay, that's a bit odd. It's correct, but I will just run this without the second field. You see that it works. So then you can capture things. All right. So that will do the trick. So take a bit of a time. It's okay. Okay. Now it's capturing. Okay. So let's see. It captured the uh, query name from Apple D and so whatever the rest. So if I no try to go to uh, another site if I say uh, I want to go to uh, some blog site okay see it went through, right zero xx block so you just click on that so it worked if I am going to go to uh, sleep dot okay, maybe it's already there but let me try I hope you got the idea. Sly IT. But okay. If it is in the cache, guys, it will not search for okay, but it's that, huh? Yep. So so this is slip that thing, which I shared. Alright, so let's close that. Fine. Okay, now you learn that as well. So we are almost to the 30th second, sorry, 30th minute. So we'll stop this and we'll come back. Uh, uh, no, like we will we'll stop this. So we'll, we'll work with another example and then we go to the mal pure malware and this is in the next video. Right, so let me now open up, uh, let me close this guy. So I'll leave it like that and uh, let me open up another file. So this time I'm going to get a uh, already captured file, but this is not a pcap, guys. So let me open it and show it to you. Uh, I need this text file, small text file. Okay, so this is uh, a text which is generated from a network and this is basically a netstat command, right? Uh, so when you get something like this, it's common, right? So uh, you will see, you have to analyze what were the missing things, right? Or what are the concerns areas? So 
uh, I'll again share this one so you can analyze this so once you do a bit of analysis you'll find out uh, there are some ports which can be concerned right so this you can get it through Wireshark as well but if you carefully look this 65,000 particular port number can be a bit tricky so in that sense you can do a, a quick uh, analysis here uh, in this particular site let me bring it down called uh, speedguide.net if you go and analyze this particular port here uh, 65,111 and uh, you can see uh, uh, this was regarded to be a backdo, so it's corrosion, right? So there are some usage of some uh, ports uh, which is uh, more prone to malware. So this is a kind of analysis, and they have captured data for a long time from 2019, and they have realized there are a lot of activities in this particular port. So that's another way of identifying concerns of. Uh, malware analysis. So this you can directly capture from Wireshark as well but I just wanted to uh, show you uh, and also then you can check the uh, related IP so we have seen it earlier uh, in that situation okay. so let me check this IP Okay, now if you look this IP address with the relevant data, you can see that is abused, right? That's abused and was found in our database, their database they found it. And um, there were several instances, see like the reports are there, uh, they are fucking me up me shit. So categories, fraud orders, DDoS attack, SQL injections, and there's another guy, this IP is hacking my phone, open proxy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so then there's another one. So they have given uh, proper records, run a scan from open ports on my network. See, so it's good, no? So when you kind of backlist this, some of the IPs, but now the thing is, this obviously can be a legitimate guy or legitimate IP where end of the day, uh, so because of some activity it got banned. So that can happen a lot. So that's why you have to, you have, to have a clean slate network. Otherwise, even though you are not doing anything bad, so that can result in something, uh, something bad to your network, right? So if your IP get banned, as you can't do anything from your network thereafter. All right. So hope you are clear about this far. So let us uh, now move uh, and meet on the next session where we'll do a proper malware analysis using a PCAP file. All right.